I know that you make something really delicious out of your home kitchen. That's why you're watching this video because people tell you you should start a business. Um, you're thinking to yourself, this is a pretty great product. I want to start a food business. But I really want you to watch this video and learn a little bit more about whether your product is really ready to go to a farmer's market or to be commercialized and go onto grocery store or Amazon shelves. So watch this video to the end to really evaluate your product before you ever get started in the next steps of starting a packaged food business. For the best packaged food advice, please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell below to get notified every time I release a brand new video all about starting a packaged food business. Hey there, I'm Sari Kimball and I am the creator of Food Business Success. I have helped hundreds of entrepreneurs start and grow profitable packaged food and drink businesses, whether they want to go into farmer's markets or get online or onto grocery store shelves. So I've been seeing this trend with some of uh, my consultations that I have with potential clients and, and new clients that I take on. And I really wanna address it here first so that you can kind of evaluate your idea before you ever sign up to work with me or uh, get on Food Business Success and join the Accelerator or the Farmer's Market Jumpstart course. I think this needs to be your very first video that you watch. And after you watch this video, I want you to check out my other video about whether you should turn your hobby into a food business also on this YouTube channel. All right, so for this, I wanna use a, a representative example. Um, I'm making this up, but it's, it seems to be kind of indicative of what I'm hearing from um, some folks who are thinking about starting a packaged food business. So let's say you make uh, an amazing sauce uh, that uses ketchup, mayonnaise, um, a Dijon mustard. It uses A1 steak sauce. Uh, a pre-mixed, like all-purpose seasoning blend, and um, you know, salt and pepper. Okay, so this is our sauce, and you're wondering. Everybody tells you it's super delicious, but you're wondering, um, is this something that you should bring to market? Whether it's the farmers market or go onto grocery store shelves. So here's what I tell my clients um, when I work with people in this situation. Uh, so certain ingredients you absolutely can use. You don't need to make everything from scratch, right? You don't need to make ketchup from scratch and mustard from scratch and mayonnaise from scratch. Um, but there are other ingredients that just you really can't use. Um, and mainly they're usually those proprietary ingredients that I need people, I ask people to stay away from and create their own. So in this example, I would buy all of those items like the mayonnaise and the ketchup and um, the mustard, like a Dijon mustard in bulk. Now, if it's a proprietary, like some special brand of mustard that's like beer, honey, mustard, something, um, that's where I would shy away from using a product like that. Um, and then as far as the A1 sauce goes, that is a proprietary sauce that I don't want to see you using in your product. Uh, the same would go for the, the uh, pre-mix seasoning blend. And there's a couple of reasons for this. So let's jump into the reasons why I uh, don't think your product is ready to go to market until you have um, kind of finalized and, and revised your uh, your recipe to be a little bit more um, unique and scratch made. I would love for you to comment below and let me know what you are thinking about a making uh, that's super delicious out of your home kitchen. All right, so here are the reasons why I want you to stay away from using pre-made products uh, that are proprietary blends. So these would be branded products, um, branded food ingredients, that have um, kind of their own special qualities, unique qualities about them, and they're harder to replicate, right? So um, I know it can get a little bit gray area here, but let's talk about the reasons why. 
So the first reason is you are commanding a higher price. Uh, when you go to a farmer's market, when you are starting out on grocery store shelves, you, your cost of goods sold is, is oftentimes very high. Um, you're not able to bring down those cost of goods sold, like your ingredients, um, as much as like uh, you know a store brand or um, a very large, well-known brand. Um, so just by the nature of, of starting a small food business, you're probably going to be charging a premium to people at a farmer's market or on a grocery store shelf. And people who are paying a premium, they want originality. They want a unique product. They want something um, that is, you know, only you can create not something that's been pre-mixed from all of these other ingredients. So I just find that the customer who is willing to pay that premium to buy that local product at their farmer's market or on grocery store shelves is looking for something that's really unique and not just a combination of other people's products. I like to think about it like this. If I were to take three brand names of coffee, uh, roasted coffee beans, and I combine them and mix them and then put them in my own package, am I really bringing anything of value to my customer? All I've done are mix pre-made products uh, that someone else could buy. I'm not really infusing my own originality and unique take on coffee. I'm not bringing anything that's really differentiating myself. The second reason uh, why I recommend that you don't use branded proprietary products in your own unique um, food or beverage product is that you have to list that product on your ingredient label and list all of the sub-ingredients. So this list can get quite long and it can be very cumbersome on your label and it can be a real turnoff to, again, to that target customer who wants to pay, is willing to pay a premium for a really unique product. And lastly, the other reason uh, I don't want you to use those products in your own product is um, depending on what you're making, uh, that it can have some legal issues. So if I wanted to make a, um, a Bloody Mary mix that I just use for other people's Bloody Mary mixes and created my own, I would probably get um, a nasty letter at some point from one or all four of those brands asking me to cease and desist or a lawsuit may incur. So um, other brands don't like it very much when you use their brand to create the same type of product. Um, so that would be the last reason I would say don't use those kind of um, products in what you're making. Uh, I do want to also add a little um, note about uh, clean products. When you're choosing um, your ingredients, I really want you to look for products that have clean labels. And this is a grocery, kind of an industry term that we use um, that indicates that the ingredients that you're using, like let's say it's in a, in a Worcestershire sauce or a ketchup, that you're looking at the ingredients on those uh, products and um, you're identifying uh, those ingredients that don't have things like corn syrup or um, coloring, caramel coloring or yellow dyes and red dyes and they don't have artificial chemical preservatives. So if your goal is to get into a natural grocery store like a Whole Foods or Vitamin Cottage um, or I guess natural grocers now, uh, you want to go on their websites and look at, they all have lists of unapproved ingredients. So these ingredients cannot be in your products. Um, so there's a, lot, a long list, but generally when we talk about clean labels, at the very least, it's no corn, high fructose corn syrup, it's no colors and dyes, and it's no chemical, um, chemical artificial additives. So. Um, try to try to use those kinds of ingredients um, because again uh, your customer who's willing to pay a premium probably also values natural and transparent labels.
Listen, I am all about saving time in the kitchen, semi-homemade, buying products that, um, that I love that help speed up my time in the kitchen. But when you're thinking about bringing a product to market, you really wanna be able to offer something that is uniquely yours. And you wanna take it down to the most basic ingredients that you can, make sure they have clean labels, and that you are able to balance out price, um, getting ingredients at a great price, um, buying in bulk, um, maybe not buying you know, organic or buying the branded um, ketchup or, or something like that. But you also wanna balance that with what is something that you can um, add to your recipe that'll really help it stand out. So maybe it's like a local honey but you're also buying fruit at Costco or some other large quantity. Um, so think about a balance of that because you wanna be able to provide a product that is going to be a little bit of a premium over somebody buying uh, you know, just a name brand at a grocery store, but it can't be so over the top in your pricing um, that you're, you're not gonna have the sales that you really need to be able to move that product and make a profit. So I hope you'll consider uh, these things before you bring your product to market. Check out my other videos uh, on this channel, Food Biz Success. All right, you're ready to start that food business. You're ready to get going. Be sure to pick up my free business checklist below. Uh, it goes over all the pitfalls and things you wanna avoid and helps you get going checking things off of your list. Also be sure to check out the free masterclass on starting a profitable farmer's market business. Uh, you can grab that, uh, the link is below here. Again, I would love if you subscribe to this channel and left a comment below, and I would love to help you make your food business real.